Well, I would say most of the f big food companies are good businesses in that they earn uh, good returns on tangible assets. And uh, uh, I, I don't want to get into particularly in the specifics on craft, but if you own important branded products in this country, uh, whether it's Wrigley's or Mars or Coca-Cola or a number of the craft brands or C's Candy, uh, you have good assets. It's not easy to take on those products. Just imagine, you know, taking on it. Coca-Cola will sell a billion and a half eight ounce servings of its product around the world today. There's something in every person's thing in every person's mind virtually in the globe about Coca-Cola. That's a product of since 1886 has been associated with happiness and good value in terms of refreshment and all that. It's just about impossible, you know, to, uh, in my mind anyway, to take on a product like that. It clearly satisfies people in the way, you know, everywhere on the globe. And, you know, it may not be the same craft, for example, as Kool-Aid in the powdered soft drink business. You know, I don't think I'd want to try and take on Kool-Aid. I'd rather have Coca-Cola, but, but it's, it's a tough product. And, and to get implanted, just think of, to get implanted in people's mind, RC Cola around the world. And RC Cola's been around a long, long time. You know, it isn't going to go anyplace. I mean, that is very, very difficult. And uh, actually, Richard Branson came over to this country. You know, they say that a brand is a promise. I mean, there's a promise involved in picking up a Milky Way or picking up a Coca-Cola as to what it's going to deliver to you. Richard Branson came over seven or eight years ago, ten years ago, you know, a fellow with the famous airline and all of that, and he came out with something called Virgin Cola. Now, I thought that was kind of an unusual promise to have in a product. Never could quite figure that one out, whether, what the promise was, but whatever it was, it didn't work. And the uh, you know, there have been, I don't know how many Don Keogh would know, but there have been hundreds of colas over the years. But in the end, who is going to, you know, buy some substitute cola for a penny a can less, or two cents a can less, than Coca-Cola, or the same thing with C's Candy, or the same thing with Kool-Aid, or whatever it may be. So we, we feel pretty good about branded products when they're runaway leaders in their field. And uh, um, there's nothing unusual about craft in their position versus Kellogg or some other people like that. So uh, the, uh, the specifics of which one we buy may depend a little bit on how we feel about the price. It certainly will make a difference how we feel about the price, the management, and some other factors. But uh, if, you, if you buy in with good brand of products and you don't pay too much, you're probably going to do okay. On the other hand, you're not going to get super rich because the attributes that I've just laid out are pretty well recognized. Charlie? Uh, I've got nothing to add. Okay. The, the strong brands, uh, you know, just look at the ones that General Foods had in, in the 1980s and the ones that Kraft has now that are, come from that same company. And I mean, Coca-Cola sold more cases of beverages last year than any year in their history, and they'll sell more this year. I mean, it, it, it's uh, a strong brand uh, is really potent stuff. I mean, take Heinz ketchup or something of the sort. It's 60% brand share in the United States, but it's much higher in many other countries. So you'll always have the fight between the retailer and the brand. And the retailer is going to use all the pressure they've got, and, and, and therefore the brand has to stand for something in the consumer's mind because in the end, the retailer may want to shift to, to a house brand, uh, private label, but and they private labels have been around forever in the soft drink field. I mean, I, I can remember when I was looking at cot beverage and all of those and thinking, you know, what will it do to us? I remember when, when uh, Sam Walton sent me the first six pack. He told me it was the first six pack of Sam's Cola 20 years ago. And believe me, Walmart has plenty of power but so does Coca-Cola, and the the brand you've got to nourish them. You know, you've got to take very, very, very good care of them. They have to stand for the promise that's in people's mind about them. But a lot of people have tried to. 
I, I don't know how many dozens or maybe hundreds of cola beverages there have uh, been over the years. Uh, RC Cola, you know, they came up with the first diet product back in the early 60s, and uh, uh, that looked like a big, big maneuver. Wilkinson came up with the blade back in the 60s after Gillette, and, and uh, but Gillette ends up with 70% by dollar value worldwide of razor blades after 100 years. So there's all, you've got to protect a brand. You've got to en en enhance it in every way. You've got to get a promise in people's minds that gets delivered that way. But that's the question Charlie and I faced in 1972 when we looked at, at C's. C's was selling for $1.95 a pound. Russell Stover was selling a little cheaper. And you had to decide how much damage could a Russell Stover do if they came after C's and they copied our shops and all that sort of thing. The, if you protect a brand, if you got a terrific brand and you protect it, it's a fabulous asset. But you'll always have trouble dealing with Costco and Walmart and the rest of the guys, Kroger and you name it. You know, they're, 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 they're tough too. But the great brands will survive and the great retailers will do well. Charlie? Well, we've almost exhausted this topic. The, uh, there's no question about the fact that waves of layoffs frighten people. A job is a very important part of a, a person's life, and, and it's, no, it's no small thing to lose it. So, but on the other hand, I don't think you, what would our country be if we'd kept everybody on the farm? All this prosperous group would be pitching hay and milking cows at four in the morning. Yeah. No, we, we, need, we, we need our businesses to be right-sized. Station 9.